Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sunny and I welcome you all to the webinar of why do cloud kitchens fail? Uh, we have seen a lot of growth in the number of cloud kitchens that are coming up in the recent COVID times. So, uh, and we also know that a lot of cloud kitchens shut down after six months of their initial establishment. So today I bring you the topic of uh, why do cloud kitchens fail and what are the six uh, elements of failure for the cloud kitchens. Uh, please watch this webinar and if you have any questions, you can just uh, comment them in the comment section. Uh, I'll just give a brief about myself. Uh, so myself, Sunny Lama, uh, I am the co-founder of RestoG. Uh, we are a restaurant marketing agency and consultancy uh, that are helping uh, 100 plus cloud kitchens to run successfully. Uh, so without wasting any time, let's get started with the today's topic today. Uh, so you can see the, why do cloud kitchens fail? Ye failure hota kyun hai? I believe it's always viable for us to learn from others mistakes so that we do not commit these mistakes and uh, we can save money and energy on the time uh, when we are uh, starting off. Uh, so today I'll be talking about why do so many cloud kitchen owners face difficulty and uh, not because of adapting and learning from these six key elements that I'm going to discuss today. Uh, on the screen you can see the first key element is the lack of growth mindset. So let me start uh, by saying lack of growth mindset. Let's understand that this is a different kind of business. If you have food delivery or dhaba ke mindset, se agar ye aapne business ko start kiya hai, to you won't be reaching the full potential for for this business you won't be growing as fast as you would need to and uh, you won't be able to scale this business so what is scalability kya hoti hai? Ye scalability basically uh, business grow karna hota hai. As you must have heard about the business uh, such as behrooz and and uh, oven story and and uh, there are a lot of uh, chains of big cloud kitchens that are running today so why do this this cloud kitchens are successful while others are struggling in the market uh, so yehi cheez ab scalability kahan se aati hai uh, scalability aati hai aapke system se how do i adopt this system so that it can help me grow this business uh, next thing i want to discuss is uh, stop playing on the retail margins uh, when you're starting off uh, I've seen they get very competitive with the competitor they want all the orders for themselves <laughs> without building a brand without building the kind of experience a customer would prefer and just straight away diving in the competition so do not play with the retail margins aim for big aim for a bigger business that you're trying to build for yourselves and it can be only done when you have all the systems in checked second thing i want to state is a brand should have their own clear standing now what do i mean by a clear standing a lot of cloud kitchens these days when they start off they're selling burgers, pasta, pizza, North Indian, Chinese and all these items. But do you think as a customer's point of view, would you prefer to order from these restaurants or would you prefer from a brand like McDonald's uh, or, or uh, Domino's that specializes on some of the stuffs and they are uh, they sell it? So obviously you will uh, prefer people who are selling through a very targeted uh, building having a good brand image among among others and will prefer those brands. So 
the main reason a lot of cloud kitchens are are also shutting down is because they are they do not have a clear standing of what their brand is uh, they just come to swiggy zomato platform thinking that they can make some money out of these platforms and get away with without even focusing on the quality of food even without focusing the kind of uh, ratings or reviews they're receiving on these platforms they think they'll just put their money in the business and the business is going to give them money back which does not work in this kind of business uh, the food business specifically has to distinguish itself from its competitors and it is very very difficult because you have the same competitions all around the world and only thing you can uh, have is the consistency and the standardized methods which you need to follow to in order to make your business work for you uh, the third path is uh, having a single income dependency a lot of cloud kitchens these days start off uh, by putting the money in Swiggy Zomato as I told earlier and they think this is going to give you back money. But we have seen there is a huge, huge, huge competition in the market right now, uh, especially in these platforms and where the commissions are so high up to 25 to 30% it becomes very difficult for any business to survive. And on top of that, you have to put down advertisements, give them discounts and all that, which sums up more than 50 to 60% of the business. And if you think you can grow with such a kind of investment, um, then it becomes very difficult uh, to stand out. Uh, having a single mode of uh, income or revenue or a platform where you can uh, put down your money in uh, will not be wise in the long run uh, for bigger brands you have to think how you can get most revenue streams for for your brand and how you can grow the business uh, that way so have do not uh, focus on a single income uh, platform for your income rather have multiple channels to uh, sell your products to your customers. The second thing I want to discuss is uh, the improper menu planning. A lot of people when they start off, they have all the items on the menu. Uh, they start off by Chinese, North Indian and all the kind of stuff that they can sell. Uh, being a customer, you will not like to order from a person who sells everything. Uh, having a broad menu will serve you no purpose if it's not curated for your customers. Uh, broad menu only works for uh, people who are like kind of selling it for uh, maybe uh, people who are selling it for maybe 50 to 60 rupees of margin. Uh, then the customer do not give second thought on what they're ordering. But if you're trying to build a big brand and you want to get the kind of big orders and uh, a customer base, a large customer base, then uh, having a definite menu actually helps. The problems of having a broad menu is firstly, it will affect the food quality. Uh, secondly, it will affect the uh, it will affect the skill set for your uh, skill set of your brand. Uh, a lot of people when they're starting off uh, do not consider this part. But uh, when you enter a kitchen, uh, there are different people working in different sections of the cuisine. And you cannot tell a North Indian person to uh, shift to a Chinese. Then that will be a, a taste and everything will just... Uh, go away so having a good focus on on a small menu and rather building on that will serve a good purpose for your brand thirdly i want to talk about the preparation time uh, it obviously gets hampered when you have a broad menu and uh, for those who do not understand what preparation time is preparation time is basically the time taken by the by you uh, in the kitchen when you are preparing the item for 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 delivery uh, when you 
take more than 5 to 10 minutes of uh, preparation time you are uh, you cannot sustain in the long run because eventually you have to grow your business and to grow your business you have to increase the radius and the only way possible is to have a standard uh, preparation time that is 5 to 10 minutes and no more than that if you are taking more than 20 minutes you are already out of the game uh, the preparation time goes more than 20 minutes every single time that uh, person puts down an order uh, you not only go down in the eyes of this swiggy zomato platform but also goes down in the eyes of the customer and i bet you do not want to be a part of that uh, third i want to talk about is the lack of upselling items in the menu uh, i guess every one of you must have seen or maybe heard about the alu tikki burger which sells for about 50 rupees uh, previously it was used to sell for about 20 to 30 rupees uh, a piece and you must be thinking like with the kind of stand uh, with the kind of establishment infrastructure and the service that they provide 50 rupees will not make money for them uh, so do you know where they actually make the money they make the money on upselling the items uh, when they when you're ordering coke or maybe when you're ordering fries uh, that is when they make money for their item uh, you might have noticed that when you're ordering a coke uh, the smaller and the medium size just have about uh, 10 to 20 rupees difference and uh, you are enticed by this and you order eventually order and now this is completely psychology and when you know exactly how to play with the psychology of the customer you can uh, put down a components and sides uh, that the customer would like to order along with the food uh, the third uh, topic uh, lack of standardization now if you're ordering from a business say uh, you're ordering a butter chicken or dal makhani from any restaurant it must be tasting different for every different restaurant uh, you might have noticed that uh, if you are like preparing dal makhani and you don't have a proper standardization for that item uh, every time you cook that item it will taste different the reason being is you do not know when the uh, at what temperatures the item is cooked or what flavors goes in the item and what is the process or the method of cooking that item now if when you don't know that every time you try to cook the same item it's gonna taste different and trust me a lot of people uh, on zomato reviews tells that the f items taste was way different than what they had ordered from the previous so standardization consistency is what the people are looking for having a standard uh, manual for example for a cloud kitchen gives a full-fledged uh, uh, access to the people uh, to to execute the work perfectly so have that in the mind when you are making uh, uh, opening a cloud kitchen uh, second is the portion size uh, as i said before uh, when you are scrolling through zomato reviews you will see a lot of people uh, telling that last time i ordered the food is completely different than what i am receiving today or the portion size which i ordered before is completely different than what i am ordering today now this happens when you don't have a standardized manual for your cloud kitchen so have that a uh, third part is the presentation now uh, there are a lot of people selling the same items as you do now in order to distinguish yourself from your competitors you have to play a different garnishing different packaging so make that presentation uh, different so that whenever a person sees your food uh, your brand strikes on their mind uh, next thing i want to talk about is the packaging level the packaging also plays an important role suppose i order a item and i receive a well packaged uh, food item and next time i order from the same person 
and I receive it without the same packaging. Think about the kind of difference it's gonna make on my uh, my thoughts. Uh, so whenever you are trying to uh, sell them or make sure you standardize the process as well for the packaging as well. Uh, you have to offer the same kind of container, same kind of packaging every time the customer receives. So what happens is the person feels or the brand strikes on the mind of the customer every time it interacts with your brand or tries a food item. Uh, thirdly, I want to talk about the post uh, delivery customer relationship. Post delivery customer relationship uh, might sound a little, uh, the post delivery uh, relationship basically talks about the kind of uh, service you are giving after the delivery is complete now for the people who are ordering directly from you are you collecting their numbers are you interacting with them are you asking them for feedback of what kind of food it is uh, what it helps is it helps you to make a good connection with the customer meanwhile collecting some feedback or what went right what went wrong in the overall a food that you have uh, given to the person. Uh, next thing, the inadequate marketing. Uh, I can totally tell you the cloud kitchen industry is full of people who do not understand marketing. They think for them pamphleting is marketing. Now, when you are thinking small or small scale or you are planning to run it as dhaba or or any of the uh, maybe any of the food delivery style and mm, not thinking big as fasos or some of the other brands biryani by kilo then you won't be putting your efforts on the marketing or neither you will be saving money or putting money on the marketing uh, having a balance on uh, both digital and the the local uh, actually amplifies the overall process of uh, getting more number of orders uh, the name recognition the brand everything comes up only once you start investing on these things uh, local and digital marketing strategies uh, needs to go side by side so that uh, you get recognition in the local as well and as well as you can also uh, get orders and have a brand name in the on digital spaces too uh, next thing uh, a lot of brands today don't have a social proof uh, the cloud kitchen especially uh, they think uh, having a profile on zomato and swiggy is all they need but trust me a lot of customers out there want to check out what kind of social media pages you have, what kind of reviews you have on Google My Business, or what kind of, uh, if there is something, uh, good items that you people sell. So all this information cannot be got, or I, someone cannot get all this information from looking at your Zomato Swiggy profile. They need uh, some kind of social proof that they can, uh, maybe it in the Facebook post, or maybe it's a, uh, a video on YouTube or maybe it's a review on Google My Business which acts as an overall uh, balance to uh, or uh, proof uh, that your business is real and it is not fake and you are one of the authenticated and uh, good brands in, in the market that they can order from. The third one, uh, not having any lead magnet on your business. So the last example which I gave is the paneer tikka, uh, I mean the the aloo tikka burger uh, as example for the lead magnet. Uh, when McDonald's launched that, it was only served as one purpose was to get as many customers on the doorstep of McDonald's and it was successful because of the pricing that they have offered and the kind of marketing it was backed up with, which is why uh, till now people go and try new customers specifically, they go and try the Alu Tiki Burger in this thing. So have a kind of offer or have a kind of uh, item uh, which can, at, at a low price, which can attract a lot of new customers to your brand. Uh, 
Fifth one is the data economics and the CRM. Uh, we all know Swiggy Zomato helps you to give orders, but one thing that they don't do is they don't share the data that you of your customers that are ordering from you. So this leads to a big gap in the restaurant and the aggregate uh, relation. Uh, because today data is the new oil and not only oil it is also the new currency uh, what we have seen in the past is uh, people who have a huge set of data can change the business all by themselves suppose you are a person who has zero orders on swiggy zomato but you have the data of 50000 or 1 lakh uh, customers if you can use the data to get uh, on, on other platforms, you can easily get the kind of orders you would have got from Swiggy Zomato or, uh, or this platform, aggregate this platform. But you have to understand that these platforms will not give you the data. So how can I get more data? The only way you can get data is by uh, removing or you can uh, implement another system uh, that is through website or these days there are more uh, features like dot p which takes commission about 10 rupees 20 rupees up to the max per item uh, uh, per order and and they give you their whole website system uh, to use uh, for a very small cost uh, and also they give you the kind of data that you will be needing to retarget for your business uh, the names, the phone number, the email address, which is very crucial uh, because once you know how to use this data on the social media or the advertisement, you can actually convert them, retarget them, make them lifelong customers. I have seen for myself uh, when restaurants start off, uh, they uh, prefer to get more customers rather than uh, uh, keeping the same customers for, for their business. And trust me, there are people, once you know how to retarget these people, a customer's lifetime value crosses for about 30, 40, 50,000. And just a new customer will just cost you around two to 300 rupees. But look at the lifetime value. That is only can be provided by the data that you have. So remember, data is the new, uh, It's a, this is a whole data business and we, uh, um, to be successful cloud kitchen you have to uh, generate or get the data and have another systems and processes from where you can collect these data uh, the sixth one and the final key element I want to talk about is the lack of PNL planning so for those who don't understand PNL PNL is the profit and loss planning uh, which happens in the financials uh, by which you can track the amount of profit or the loss you're making in that particular year or a month or a week as you prefer to get the data. Uh, I am surprised that a lot of people today in the industry do not understand the basics of finance and which is why so many of the business are failing. Uh, if you have seen, uh, they don't even know what what. Uh, break even cost even mean which which is a big shame uh, uh, for for those who don't understand what a break even cost is a break even cost is basically uh, the the expense uh, uh, minus the cost uh, profits that uh, the revenue that you have generated for the day and that's that uh, so so for those of you who do not understand break-even cost, so let me just give you an example. Uh, suppose you make money of uh, your expenses of 3 lakh rupees and you are uh, making for about 10,000 rupees every single day. Then, uh, uh, or if you are making more than 10,000 rupees, so once you have reached to that level of 10,000 rupees a day, uh, if you multiply that by 30, it is th 3 lakh rupees. So that means you have reached the break even for that particular day. And anything that comes above 10,000 rupees is your profit. So this is break even cost. And I'm surprised many people who do not 
uh, calculate the financial they just get the money from swiggy zomato and they pay to the vendors without even tracking of what's going on how much money they are making every month or even every week if, if as in some cases they do not track this and this leads to a, a, a mindset where they do not understand uh, how they can utilize this money how much needs to be utilized on the marketing how need how much need they need to put down in the new business how much they need to improvise this uh, current uh, manpower or or the structure of of the business so all this can be done once you have proper financial planning for your business and it can be done when you're tracking your pnl uh, so uh, these are the six key elements uh, now i want to discuss upon a few of the growth hack strategies that the cloud kitchens can use and can help them to grow their business so starting off with the first one the website and like i told talked earlier uh, there are new uh, startups in the market that are giving uh, restaurants uh, a good platform to uh, move away from not exactly move away but a, a di different uh, platform so that they can generate their own revenue without paying a higher commission that that swig and zomato is charging uh, that is uh, dot pay and thrive and there are others in the market so having a website will serve you three to four functions uh, four functions in as as in the slide uh, the first thing it will help you to generate leads now the leads that you generate will be yours forever because the data also comes along with that so you can be rest assured you can use this data to reach out the customers again and again and again uh, without paying any commission to anyone uh, secondly your website will showcase the kind of menu that you're dealing similar to swiggy zomato menu uh, view and uh, the, the photos that you can put up there similarly you can also state pictures or, and and you can put down your menu so that the customer understand the kind of food that you're selling uh, third one it you can also attract a lot of people i talked about the lead magnet before the lead magnet you can showcase out here in the in the in the header of the in the in the in the first page of the website where the customers can interact and and see what kind of offers that you are selling uh, what kind of offers that you have for your current uh, restaurant or cloud kitchen the fourth one uh, you can also obviously you have to create a system so that the customer can order directly from these platforms and uh, without going to other portals such as swiggy zomato and once they can check out they can pay make the payment on the thing and it can be uh, paid it goes directly to your bank account so having the ease of order also serves as a good function for your website second on the list is whatsapp for business a lot of you guys might have heard about whatsapp for business uh, can be utilized for restaurant marketing but do you know how it can be used uh, now since you have collected all the data that i am assuming from your website you can use this data to target selective customers on the social media channels which then can be redirected directly to your whatsapp number and once you have that they can select the kind of combos they are interested in or the kind of items they want to order and they can place the order directly on whatsapp uh, so i'll just give you a little overview how this works is uh, when you open an account on whatsapp for business it is quite similar to the account that you create for your own profile uh, just the difference is that it has few extra features such as uh, the catalog uh, where you can put down the items that you want to sell maybe it can be of the combos maybe it can be of the individual items that you're trying to promote uh, make sure you keep a selected number of items here uh, you can also list down the menu that you are selling uh, in the form of pictures and lastly you can use this platform to broadcast to your customer base uh, all the data that you have saved in your website or other channels you can utilize it to broadcast your 
promotional activities or you can broadcast simply uh, the today's menu to the people that follows you this can be a best tool for to convert your own customers into regular or uh, monthly visitors uh, next on the list is uh, google my business so google my business what uh, exactly is google my business uh, so google my business basically a profile that is created by google on behalf of your restaurant or store uh, on the map and google pages obviously on the map specifically where they have specifically written the address and the ratings and the pictures uh, for your restaurant so let me get started again rest google my business so google my business is basically a platform where your restaurant gets listed so that people can contribute such as reviews photos so that people know about the eateries and the kind of experience they had on your on on your restaurant from your restaurant so since you're a cloud kitchen uh, a google my business page will serve you as a uh, point of proof uh, for your social uh, existence and it will help the customer to understand the kind of food that you offer through the reviews that are left by your customers on 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 this platform and uh, they can also see the kind of food images uh, images that you serve to your customers uh, next thing is uh, they can also check the kind of uh, reviews that your customers have left uh, so this will give them a kind of social proof that you exist and you are a good business and you are doing well in the cloud kitchen section uh, apart from that let me also give you what you should be working upon in order to improve your google my business first things first first is ratings uh, the ratings acts as a, a a proof that the kind of food or the quality of food that you're serving for your restaurant the better the ratings the better the impression on your customers secondly uh, the number of reviews uh, many eateries have one or two reviews which then uh, creates rather a kind of a mess kind of image in the consumer's mind having a good number of reviews always impacts a positive psychology on your customers so make sure the number of reviews on your google my business page is certainly more than 20 25 or even more as per the the scenario thirdly uh the number of uh, the reviews the reviews that are actually getting posted by your cu customers generally people post positive uh, but mostly negative but you need to be very uh, active in this platform to respond to the negative reviews that are happening turn into a positive uh, uh, thing and so that the people who are watching uh, just viewing your profile will know the kind of uh, uh, relationship you are the customer service that you do uh, for for your restaurant so this will act definitely act as one of the good uh, impression on your customer uh, the fourth thing is the Google My Business page also has a section where it can show the popular time of uh, ordering or eats. Uh, so you can use this data to actually target your customers uh, on this platform, maybe through Google Ads or YouTube videos. You can do that using the data that is provided to you by Google themselves. Uh, on the next is the packaging. Uh, packaging uh, packaging is a very important part of the cloud kitchen business the thing about packaging is that uh, it kind of creates the experience that the consumer might have when he or she have visited a restaurant 
since you're a cloud kitchen, you need to build that experience right then and there for your consumer in their homes. Now, if you have checked the last uh, previous lockdown, which has happened, uh, there were many number of brands who have come out with customized packaging and uh, built or worked upon the experience of home delivery and eating at home experience for 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 their brand. Uh, you might have heard about the Barbecue Nation launching their uh, package where they come to your house, they deliver in a nice package, uh, recyclable package. Uh, with a lot of containers for different items and it comes whole thing in a combo but the way they deliver it and the way they present it is top of the class uh, thing uh, same with uh, merit on wheels they also created certain experience similar experience for their consumer now to be successful on cloud kitchen you have to create a extravagant experience for your consumer in terms of branding, you have to uh, create that uh, kind of uh, brand uh, image in front of your consumer's mind that plays a positive role in the overall uh, communication. Uh, so make sure whenever you have the packaging, the packaging should have the logo first thing on every section of the packaging be it containers be it on straws if you're sending spoons or on the outer co covers and you can practically put the logo everywhere so that the number of recalls for your brand is more on the eyes of your consumer second thing make the packaging uh, sustainable now a lot of hype has been there for the sustainable uh, packaging which has been adopted by many 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 of the cloud kitchens so to be successful or be on the par level of these competitors you have to make your uh, packaging sustainable that is recyclable or uh, it can be reused third uh, make sure the containers that you're supplying with the packaging is kind of uh, microwavable so that it can be easily put down on a heater, uh, I mean micro oven, and it can be tossed and uh, heated and the thing can be tasted after the meal. Uh, fourth on the list is convenience. Now, whenever I'm ordering uh, a food, I always look if there's spoons or things which I need to eat on the packaging itself because I don't want to go around my home pick up another spoon and or maybe uh, things which uh, i need while i eat so create looking after all this uh, small details will serve a good purpose for your overall brand experience and thus lead to growth of your cloud kitchen uh, finally i want to talk about the online advertising uh, a lot of people has been hyped thinking that uh, cloud kitchen advertising why why does it even need uh, but i'll tell you why it needs many people right now i've seen in the industry they think pamphlet or pamphlet uh, distribution for the cloud kitchen is enough for for building up sales but it is completely not true there are uh, big internet restaurants which just have a single cloud kitchen and have five uh, 12 to 14 uh, brands under one hood and they focuses on building their digital uh, presence and uh, communication uh, firstly work upon your online portal optimization what I mean through it, this is uh, when you are uploading your menu on Swiggy Zomato platforms, make sure each menu or items is well categorized in a manner that is easy for the customers to see and order. Secondly, make sure the items that you have put up on this uh, Swiggy Zomato platform, make sure they have the kind of description that uh, would require and the picture uh, 
uh, for the consumer to understand what kind of food or thing they are about to get on the plate so make sure you put that uh, to create a good experience for your consumer secondly you have to work upon the seo for your website if you have one uh, make it seo friendly so that whenever a person searches for uh, suppose pizzas near me or uh, burgers near me or burgers in the so and so city uh, your page pops up on the top so look after these things so that it helps you to increase the number of sales that you can do for the for your for, for your brand uh, secondly uh, see opportunities in the influencer marketing influencer marketing has been the new trend and it's gonna stay with us for a long long time uh, for food specifically there are food communities where uh, influencers that belong to the food industry review the outlets and give their feedback or experience for the same uh, being on the digital or promoting yourself on the digital will influencers will act as a proof for your uh, good experience that and hospitality that you offer uh, uh, through your through your brand so make sure you collaborate with uh, some of the uh, food bloggers or influencers and to make your brand more authentic and uh, trustworthy third thing uh, running hyper local ads now hyper local ads are the kind of ads that you run on a radius or, or a single locality or an area where your cloud kitchen is based. We all know you cannot deliver to some other or maybe 10 kilometers away from your, uh, from your restaurant. But what you can do is to get maximum number of orders in that uh, particular area which you will be able to cater. So, uh, apart from the Swiggy Zomato, you can run ads on your website you can run on zomato uh, i mean you can run on facebook instagram you can run on google so that you get the flow of customers from all the different platforms to meet up uh, the uh, growth that you have thought about uh, so hyper local ads focus on hyper local ads to build up your brand uh, fourth is the broadcast sms and whatsapp now a lot of brands these days uh, tend to forget that sms also exists and it is one of the good platforms to convert uh, specifically on the certain days where uh, we tend to check our messages uh, be it on our birthday be it on our anniversary a lot of brands uh, uh, messages their customer telling them wishing them happy birthday and offering them certain discount for for a purchase that they do and for restaurant or cloud kitchen it is no less you have to seize this opportunity you have to work on this opportunity and get the customer to you imagine a person having a birthday uh, he or she will be likely to spend 10 times or 15 times more than he would have normally done so if you could just get this customer or get strike uh, in the customer's head uh, with the name of your brand he or she is more likely to order from you and once that happens you will be making more money or more sales in terms of uh, from from reaching out to average or, uh, or a normal cost customer so make sure you keep uh, the sms thing going for your since you will have a website to cover it up you will be having the data and then only uh, when you can put them on the sms uh, broadcast uh, software then you will be getting these customers for your brand as well uh, so we come to an end to the webinar uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys must have uh, learned a lot of things about uh, cloud kitchens and uh, as uh, i had discussed previously the six uh, elements for cloud kitchen failures i'm sure you guys will take away something from this webinar and can implement for your cloud kitchen finally i just want to request one thing uh, before you just leave the webinar we have a group restogy academy 
restaurant growth academy uh on the page uh just join this group i promise you you will not be disappointed because we keep sharing tips like this every single day so that you guys can improve or level up your game in the, in the cloud kitchen industry uh if you don't know i'll just leave uh, the link on the description as well so that you guys can join it after the webinar and if you have any questions or anything related to this webinar or any problems that you are facing in the cloud kitchen uh, thing you can directly contact us on our email address that is info at the rate resto-g.com i'll just spell it out for you i n f o at the rate r e s t o dash g dot com so you can mail or uh, you can call us uh, on the number given on our website and you can take uh, we'll be glad to help you on any of the problems that you are facing on your cloud kitchen business so once again i'll just take a leave for the webinar and thank you everyone for joining us uh, until we meet in the next episode